If you're watching this on YouTube and you have a question, comment, suggestion, or maybe you just want to find out more information about the product, you can find the link below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds from 3GameMan.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Cooler Master Game Extreme GX2 550 watt power supply. A great looking box that is a little different depending upon which power supply you go with and there are a few in this series but an overall great looking box that has lots of information on it. Note that it has plastic on the outside so let me take that off and let's see what's on the inside. Included is a user's manual power cord, four black regular screws, and the power supply, which is in this bubble wrap bag. Now let's have a closer look. Now this is the second generation of the very popular Game Extreme power supply. That power supply was one of Cooler Master's best sellers because it was compatible, durable, and priced aggressively. This one has been tweaked. It also includes a new silent fan as well as a non-stop USB power plug. And I'll go over that a little later on in the video review. The Game Extreme 2 line of power supplies are currently available in a number of wattages. 400, 450, 550, 650, and 750. So you've got lots to choose from. Now how is this wattage determined? Well to understand this, you need to know what rails are. And rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can can use and there are essentially two different rails the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail now in this particular case the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 120 watts and the 12 volt is 528 watts which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined now the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. Also it is important to know the peak amps on each rail. Well the plus 3.3 volt as well as the plus 5 volt rails are 20 amps each and thankfully it has a single plus 12 volt rail and that is 44 amps. And when you're selecting a power supply, of course, it's extremely important to get one that is going to serve you well. So don't go out and buy the cheapest power supply that is on the market because it is one of the most important parts of your computer system. And there are a few things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first one is wattage. You need to determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware that you will be installing. Now, generally speaking, a medium to high-end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply, so that would fit perfectly there. For a hardcore system though, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line, multiple video cards set up with lots of other hardware, I'd go with a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficiency at typical load. This power supply's efficiency is 85% at typical load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC or active power factor correction assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, 80 plus, NVIDIA SLI, and AMD. The crossfire. Now, many of today's high end power supplies will meet one or more of these certifications. This power supply meets the 80 plus bronze certification. Sixth, if you're building an extreme gaming rig and you're looking for a super high quality, high wattage power supply, I would go with one that uses Japanese capacitors because in general, it does mean a more reliable product than a power supply with low grade capacitors. Now, this power supply does not have Japanese capacitors. However, there's a reason for that. Of course, it is what you would consider a budget to low cost power supply option. I mean, this is not a platinum certified power supply. 
and also for the most part if they are decent quality capacitors and the power supply comes with a really good warranty I wouldn't worry so much about getting a power supply that doesn't use Japanese capacitors and this power supply does come with a five-year warranty and that's a couple years beyond what you'd find normal power supplies in this class a lot of power supplies in this class will have a two or three year warranty and this one comes with a five year warranty finally get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside the case this power supply has a black paint finish and the housing is steel they include a 120 millimeter fan and there's lots of ventilation holes so this power supply should remain cool in almost any environment Here's the power cord connection and the power switch. Now this power supply isn't modular. As you can see, all of the leads are hardwired into the power supply and can't be removed, but there's plenty of them considering its wattage. Personally, I prefer modular leads because you only need to use the ones required for your particular setup, which reduces the cable mess and thus increases airflow inside the case. This power supply has something rather unique. What you're looking at here is a non-stop USB power plug. This end gets connected into the motherboard and then the other end would get connected into the case's I.O. ports at the front. So you can charge whatever you need to charge using the USB connector when the PC is off. Finally, have a listen to the 120 millimeter fan. Now this power supply isn't gold or platinum certified and it doesn't come with modular leads. What it has going for it is major bang for the buck. And that's what most of us are looking for these days. Some can afford the super high quality power supplies and they're willing to pay a premium for them. But if you're not, this is a perfect option because it is 80 plus bronze certified, comes with a quiet 120 millimeter fan. It does have that rather unique non-stop USB power plug and comes with a five year warranty. Overall, this is a kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. How do you think this product stacks up? To vote, head on over to 3dgameman.com and while you're there, check out the pricing.